Hello, everyone. A very special occasion for us. A renowned historian, biographer, author Ramachandra Gua is with us. His new book, The Commonwealth of Cricket, has just been published by HarperCollins, both in the UK and in India. And of course, as you might expect, with every new book from Ram, it's a treat for readers. Congratulations, Ram, on the publication of The Commonwealth of Cricket. Uh, to start with, uh, I, I mean, I am curious. I think a lot of readers might be curious. Uh, will you tell us a little bit about the title? Why did you want to call it the Commonwealth of Cricket? Well, um, I wanted to because, you know, uh, partly uh, I must say uh, it's a literary fetish. I like alliterations, but right. more than but more than that, I think it expresses the theme of the book hmm. because the book covers. My experience of uh, watching, playing, reading, uh, writing about, and even at the end, administering cricket across a wide spectrum of domains. So this is an account of school cricket, club cricket, college cricket, country trophy cricket, Indian cricket, great Indian cricketers, great foreign cricketers. Uh, so it's uh, it's the whole arc of the game. So it's the Commonwealth, and also because is an epigraph from. Uh, John Pingleton, which I'll just very briefly read out, which yep. says basically says that the you know the great cricket writer Jack Pingleton, the Aussie cricket writer, he said, "When I was young, I wanted my country to win. The older I got, I didn't really care. What mattered was the challenge that was accepted for one, the classical technique of a uh, of an innings or the art of the bowler. And I you could say many years later, I saw that performance. So essentially, it's also about Transcending chauvinisms, you know. I always wanted Karnataka to win. I mm -hmm. always wanted St Stephen's College to beat Hindu College. I always mm -hmm. wanted India to beat Australia. But you glory in the game, the older you get. So I think that's really the sense in which uh, uh, you know I use that title. And the title has been in my mind for a very long time, well before the book was actually written. I want right. to write a book. It's it's been eighteen years from since your classic work, A Corner of a Foreign Field. Um, after those wonderful, great books on on Gandhi, uh, why did you want to return to cricket uh, for 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 your new book? Uh, I I know it's been a passion with you always, but but why did you? Uh, any particular reason why you chose cricket as the theme of your next book? Well, if, you see, these things happen. As I said the book was within me. Uh, I wanted to write a book of this kind for a very long time. And of course, um, uh, as I say somewhere in the book, you know, I write on cricket to live, but I have to write on other things to make a living, you know. So, so okay. writing columns, writing scholarly books, giving lectures, teaching, all that preoccupies one. And when I had a few months off, uh, I wrote this book, you know, when I had sort of freedom after the second volume by Gandhi, I sort of the freedom and the space and the emotional space to indulge myself, but it's been within me a very long time. Hmm. Uh, it, it's a, so it's, uh, what I felt uh, when, when I first read the manuscript was that this is actually a very personal book. It, it is, of course, it's a memoir, it's a cricketing memoir. Uh, and as the subtitle elucidates, it, it's about a lifelong love affair with the most subtle and sophisticated game known to humankind. Uh, wonderful subtitle that, that actually says a lot. Um, and as, as you just wonder, I mean, cricket is such a passion for you. Uh, Ram, Ram uh, for, for our readers who haven't seen the uh, book yet, uh, Ram says that he's been a professional historian for uh, three decades and uh, has been a cricket fanatics for three more decades, so a total of six decades. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what the game of cricket uh, what about the game of cricket uh, appeals so much to you? Why it's so close to your heart? Why, why does it speak to you uh, so much? So, you know, then as I talk in my book, uh, my first cricketing hero was my uncle, uh, who had a grave handicap in one hand. So yes. one hand was deep form. Mm -hmm. And with that, he played for the best college team in India with test cricketers and was a Ranji Trophy reserve. And at the age of 84, he still runs one of Bangalore's best clubs, the French Union Cricket Club, which has produced two, two, two test cricketers and many first-class cricketers. His name is then Dore Swami. And he was my mama. And in right. South India particularly, the mother's brother is very, very close to you. you know. Right. And he had no children of his own. And when he saw that, unlike him, I had two hands and two legs, 
he said, I'm going to make my nephew a test cricketer. Of course, he lamentably failed, but he inculcated this love of the game. Really? And I grew up in a charming, beautiful town, Dehradun, which was then much prettier and nicer than it is now, yes. playing club cricket, playing school cricket, following it, following it on the radio, and which is a very different charm. And you have to imagine what's happening when you listen on the radio. Right. And then I went to St. Stephen's where I played five years with high quality cricketers. I was the 11th best player in a very fine team. Mm -hmm. uh, I just started reading about it, you know, so, you know, and the literature of cricket is incredibly rich, you know, among mm -hmm. all the sports. The quality of writing on cricket is arguably finer than the writing on football or hockey or tennis. Maybe boxing to some extent comes close. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe. That's, that, 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 that. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of, and even when I uh, realized that I was not going to make it professionally as a cricketer, I started watching. Mm -hmm. And the thing about cricket is, cricket watching is a collective exercise. Because right. the, as I explained in a column of foreign field, the action is interrupted. Right. You're watching a match. Federer played Nadal. You're concentrating on the game all the time. Yeah. Uh, but if you're watching a cricket match, you're not alone. You know, a ball is bowled, then the, someone comes back, a wicket falls, there's right. an Indian break, and you're chatting with, you know, that's why it kind of appeals a lot to Indians, that you can gossip, yeah. and, uh, exchange stories. Uh, the character, the cricketer also reveals himself much more uh, on the field than the character of a tennis player or a, a soccer player where the action is totally continuous. So it's been very much part of my life from the time my uncle, when I was four years old, my uncle said, I'm going to make you a top class cricketer. And mm. my father also played club cricket. I grew up in a family of, you know, one of my cousins was a Tamil Nadu reserve uh, who gave me my first cricket book, in fact, uh, yes. this, this cousin of mine. So, you know, it was kind of uh, very much part of the background of my life and has remained ever since. And it's, you know, of course, I have strong prejudices. One of the uh, prejudices expressed in this book is I'm a partisan of bowlers over batsmen. I feel bowlers win test matches, but they never get the endorsements or the prizes mm -hmm. or the captaincy. I'm a partisan of a test cricket over everything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so much of this is also apart from the joy, the affection, the emotion uh, uh, that, I, uh, that, that the game resonates in me. I've also freely expressed my prejudices, which I wouldn't do in a work of scholarship. Mm -hmm. The work of scholarship will be conveyed by the research. Right. Uh, whereas here, in a literary work, in a memoir, you can let yourself go. So it was right. kind of really after writing 2,000 pages on Gandhi, this was kind of a release, <laughs> a kind of a personal and a professional release to write on Right, right. So there, there, have, there have, of course, been a, there's a whole tradition of great writers on, on cricket and, and your, your, your own uh, Corner of a Foreign Field is one of the you know, great books of our time. Uh, but writing on a game like this, it, it, it must be, I just wanted to ask you that because it's, I mean, watching the game is one thing, whether you're watching from the stands or, or, or on television. And as you, as you said, you know, in, 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 uh, in the older days, we used to follow it on the radio. And I think before that, people uh, might even have been following just newspaper reports the day after. Uh, but what would happen, uh, I mean, when you're actually watching the game, it, it is, it's very compressed action, isn't it? I mean, I mean when, when, from the point when the bowler actually delivers the ball, so the, the batsman hits it, the fielder goes after it, that's maybe a second or a second and a half or two seconds uh, in all. Whereas the build up to the delivery, you know, the bowler going back to, to the end top of his mark and then running in, and then the batsman also preparing after the delivery, that's a much longer time, and it, it, so time time kind of behaves differently on the cricket field, doesn't it? So, so therefore, I mean, uh, uh, try and kind of instead of making a comment about this, I try and phrase this as a question. Huh? So, writing about it must be especially challenging because it's. I mean, to try to convey that those different behaviors of time uh, when when you are yeah. actually describing the action on on the cricket field. Did, did you? Yeah, did you I mean, you know, it is, uh, but that's the drama, drama of it, you know, uh, yes. uh, you know, as I said, how the bowler polishes the ball as he's yeah. going back. Whom does he talk to? For example, uh, there's a cameo in my book of a Pakistan team right. where Imran Khan is the strike bowler. Right. Majid Khan, his first cousin, uh, is fit, but he would right. always take, run to Imran, take his cap, chat with him while Imran was allowed to bowl the first ball of his over. And I joke, yeah. I said, are they discussing the in-swing or the out-swing <laughs> or the cuisine of a Chelsea restaurant because they were elite yes, Pantanis? Yes, yes. Or the rents, their, their 
who are peasants pay because they are also large landlords. So this is kind of yeah. your fantasy. I have no clue. But in cricket, that can happen. You know, you can kind of try and uh, probe into how what the what the conversations are. You know, and unfortunately, the helmet has taken a lot out of this. You yes, know, I, yes, yes, yes. Because, because you can't handle expressions. Yes, yeah. yes. But yes. Even, even with the helmet in the field, you know, you watch mm. the Indian team play. Mm. If you watched the Indian team play ten years ago, you could tell Lakshman and Dravid were really, really close. You know, yes. by the way, the chatter has slipped. You know, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Talk to anyone else in the same way. Why was that? Uh, why was that? Because they're both, you know, simpler temperaments. They grew mm. up playing South Zone schools, South Zone under nineteen. You, know, you could right. tell that. So, so. Uh, who a person likes, who he doesn't like, who's more emotional, who's more withdrawn. Yeah. All this then becomes a uh, part of the writer's imagination. Right. And then uh, partly fact, partly imagination, because mm -hmm. stands, I don't really know what Dravid is saying at first slip to Lakshman in second slip, but I can't get kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but essentially, because the action is so drawn out between deliveries, uh, it gives a license, a literary license to be more expansive, to be more imaginative, to perhaps to be more romantic. You know, uh, yeah. you can't really write about hockey in this way at all. Or no, for, no, no. Uh, of course, you know, I must say that you know this book is dedicated to my father and my son. Yes, it's kind of also generational. You learn from your elders, you pass it on to your people beyond, and you debate, you argue. You know, so I mean, for me to persuade my son that Gavaskar was as good as Tendulkar is very hard work, right? That is very but difficult. I, yes, not just. <laughs> Within a generation, yes. not only with your friends of the same age, but also your pa your parents, your children. Uh, you know, if uh, an Indian or a Pakistani is having a conversation about who was the greatest all-rounder of the 1970s and 80s, uh, you know, conversations about Imran versus Kapil, for example. So this it lends itself to this all this kind of engagement, mm -hmm. and hence, uh, you know, uh, to the kind of literature that flourishes. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's some. Wonderful writers of cricket in our country too. I mean, if you, if you think of uh, Rahul Bhattacharya's book, Pandits from Pakistan, oh, or if you think of um, Prashant Kidambi's wonderful book on the 1911 Indian tour of England, cricket country, right. or the right. journalism of Suresh Menon, for example, mm -hmm. or Sharda Ukra. You mm -hmm. know, you see, you see a quality of literary writing, you won't see uh, uh, with due respect. You'll find a high degree of technical proficiency in writers on chess and in football. But true, not very really rarely the same kind of literary elegance that you would find in writers on cricket, whether they be journalists or uh, scholars or, or, or analysts or whatever. Now, Indeed. yeah, I mean, I, I, one of my weaknesses is actually I'm not very good at technique. So I kind of get technique out of the book. It's more right. character that is, you know, uh, that, that, that is at the forefront. Right. Now, uh, speaking of uh, sort of generational change, uh, so, I, I mean, you've been following cricket closely for decades. Uh, I, I think when, when both you and I first started following uh, Indian cricket closely, especially at international cricket, so 1960s, early 1970s, even through the 1980s, in fact, uh, if India won a match, it came as a shock. Uh, nowadays, if we don't win, there's a major brouhaha. Why did we, how could this match be drawn? We should have won it. Now, what has changed? Has has cricket in, ha, has have Indian cricketers got better at it? Uh, is the technique better? Uh, are, are, have we become more dominant on the field? What do you think has happened? Many things have happened. I think fundamentally, uh, on the positive side, we become a more prosperous country. So we can pay mm -hmm. our cricketers much better. Yes. Uh, the cricketers themselves have a much better diet, better equipment, uh, you know, better physical training. Yeah. And you know, some of our, our, our outside, for example, take someone like Abbas Ali Beg. All right. right, he got a hundred in his first Test match. Uh, and in England, as a university boy, he was taken out to play. He got a hundred against Truman and Statham in his first Test match. And I think he played in the, a total of eight or ten Tests because he came back from England. He had to get a job. Right, right. And Prasanna played his uh, India's greatest ever off spinner. Mm -hmm. Played his first Test match in 1962 and the next in 1967 because he had to. Can you imagine it, that? Yes, yes. Uh, to have job security, so mm -hmm. now cricketers, if they're good at 16 or 17, can go totally into professional cricket. Mm -hmm. They have an endorsement, a sponsorship, an agent. Uh, you know, uh, and I think that's been very important. That's the positive yes. side. The yes. negative side, and let's be really realistic. 
uh, so that we don't glorify recent Indian achievements too much. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So that cricket is not an international sport in the way soccer is, or golf is, or boxing is, or tennis is. It's only played by a handful of countries. Right. And in those handful of countries, uh, you know, we are the most populous. Yes. I mean, our closest competition is Australia, probably. And Australia, I think, is 20, in, in cricketing terms, and Australia must be 25 or 30 million. Uh, we yeah. are, you know, plus. So, really, it's, it's a joke eh, with this kind of obsession and passion and mass following and the vast reservoir of a billion plus people to choose your team from. It's really, we should really be winning all the time. So, the surprise is that we don't really win all the time. And I think economic, <laughs> our economic growth, because mm -hmm. it means much easier. I mean, like, you know, I, I mean, Bishan Singh Bedi, who is one of my great heroes I'm going to talk about in this book, yes, yes. Uh, played a match, played a test match, I forget where, it may have been in uh, Nagpur. Mm -hmm. Had to go to play a Ranji Trophy match in Punjab three days later. He travelled yeah. unreserved in a train compartment. Mm -hmm. Now, he was just taking a flight and that's it, he will have posted for five out. So, we are able to treat our cricketers much better and I think they correspondingly also perform better. Mm -hmm. So, I think these are some of the reasons. And in India, it's the number one sport, indeed the sole sport. In the other cricketing uh, countries, uh, in England, soccer absolutely comes first, yes. rugby probably rugby, comes second, yes. uh, maybe golf third and then cricket. In yes. Australia, it's Australian rules, football, athletics, tennis, swimming, mm -hmm. and somewhere then cricket. Yes. So really, you know, it, it, is, it is the modern world's greatest popular passion and greater than film. Something else that is to happen, I don't talk about this book, but I allude to it in a corner of foreign field, is that in some ways, over the course of your lifetime and my lifetime, then, cricket has become more important than film. Indeed. indeed. I mean, we are yes. calling yes. greater than yes. any male Indian star. Mm -hmm. That was not the case for Gavaskar versus Bachchan, or, you know, mm -hmm. even Kapil Dev versus who are the great stars, one of the yes. 70s, 80s, right. So, it's quite extraordinary how it's, and I think, uh, given all of this, I mean, I think really our cricketers should really win all the time. And it's quite mm -hmm. a surprise that they don't. No, something you said there, which I want to pick up on. I mean, so, you know, for all of us, the, the world across, it, it's been a very, very difficult year. Uh, now, in these times, uh, would you say that cricket continues to hold an enchantment that we can still return to as one of the great joys of life? And I personally, I, I it, it was bizarre watching uh, West Indies versus England and then Pakistan versus England. Uh, Test matches being played in front of absolutely empty stands uh, for, for reasons of uh, security and protection. Uh, but still, I mean, just watching those games on television was like a homecoming to me. And I'm so looking forward to uh, the upcoming series, West Indies, New Zealand, um, England, South Africa, and of course, Australia, India. Uh, was it the same for you? Uh, do you, I mean, I, I'm, I'm making the comparison here of so in terms of going out to cinemas has also not been possible for ever yeah. since the lockdown was imposed, ever since we were severely impacted by COVID. Uh, movies have been coming home to us on, on OTT platforms and, and, and uh, direct releases happening on OTT now. But I don't think that they're, they're having the same kind of resonance, but, but cricket seems to still hold a, an enchantment. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, certainly, certainly. I mean, if you look at uh, the summer, so, you know, the COVID really came in uh, March, right? Yes. So, IPL was cancelled. Yes. Then the question was, or postponed, the question was, will there be test cricket in England? Right. Now, there been test cricket in England every year since 1945. In 1970, the South African tour was cancelled because of apartheid, but there was yes. a substitute rest of the world series, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was still not clear whether there'd be cricket, but it happened. And, yes. you know, the nice thing about test cricket in England, uh, for someone like me and for someone like you, that is, people who have jobs to do, is that you can work till four o'clock and with a clean conscience work <laughs> cricket. Exactly. Exactly. In India, you know, yeah. it's cut the day and you feel guilty about watching too yeah. much about it. Yeah. Australia, we get at 4.30 or uh, New Zealand and you know, it's hard on people of my age to you know, drag yourself out of bed. New Zealand is, New Zealand is really but, difficult. I mean, that's 3.30, right? Yes. Yeah. Is it starts at a civilized time, ends at yeah. a civilized time. Yes. You can get a day's work done on other things. Right. The other nice thing, at least for me, and this is kind of linked to what I said about Jack Fingleton, is mm -hmm. I'm no longer nationalistic about cricket, and I actually like it more when India is not playing. 
because you're concentrating on the pure aesthetics. You know, the Asad his leg break for Pakistan versus yes. Jimmy Anderson. You know, his his kind of batters yeah. yeah. and out out swingers. So I think that's nice. It's always nicer for for a for a person of my age. I mean, the young yeah. people of course want their country to win. Want only to watch their country uh, play, and so on. I can appreciate that. I was like that when I was young too. When I was mm -hmm. young too, uh, I mean, I relate uh, an incident in my book of the first Test match I watched, which was December 1972. I was 14. I had been yes. a cricket not mad since the age of four for 10 years. I had obsessed about cricket. I watched my first Test match, and India lost, <laughs> and I was devastated. And I was walking back to my aunt's house from the Ferocia Kotla. Nice. Uh, my aunt was an army officer. I mean, she was a very pioneering, I mean, she was a female army officer in the 1970s. So, you know, she's yeah. quite a remarkable lady. And I was staying with her. I walked back, and the streets said Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Kasturba Gandhi, uh, Maulana Azad Road. I was walking back all these Delhi roads and, you know, thinking, here are these patriots who are kind of speak to me, but my team has lost. I was that totally, I can still look at, imagine walking through those things, right? So, I can, I can appreciate young people, young Indians following India obsessively. But at my age, I want a good match. I want artistry, I want poetry. And I think what this summer did for someone like me was in the midst of COVID, you know, lifted the depression because of cricket. Uh, it was at a time when you could watch and there were good commentators, I mean, Michael Atherton and uh, Shane Wong, yes. uh, Michael Holding, outstanding yes. commentators, you know, not mm. the kind you would get with due respect either on Indian TV or Australian TV or Pakistani yes. TV. Right. right. It was just a joyous few weeks. And I wrote about it in my column of Telegraph. Yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes indeed. Any, any favorite cricketers, Ram? I, I mean, I, you've been following cricket so closely for six decades. Uh, favorite batsman, favorite bowler, oh, no, absolute no, favorite? I mean, uh, you know, it's hard to pick. Obviously, you know, uh, the cricketers of your youth matter a great deal. I mean, uh, Ian Peebles, who was both, both a test cricketer for England and a fine cricket writer, once said, there are no cricketers like those seen through 12-year-old eyes. Right. So I was 12 when I shook Vishwanath's hand, was Prasanna Bowl. So Vishwanath, Prasanna, uh, you know, uh, Bishan Bedi, Sudhil Gavaskar, will always have a certain aura in my eyes. Right. Right. But I'm kind of ecumenical. I mean, there's a, there are two chapters in this book on foreign yes. cricketers. Mm -hmm. One on great cricketers, uh, one on cricketers from Pakistan, That's right. which is called my favorite Pakistanis. The other called the Hindu's pantheon, you know, because, you know, yes. as a Hindu, I have many, I don't know worship one god, I have hundreds of yeah. gods, right? Yeah. Uh, but as a historian, I was obliged to, this, the 11 chapters in this book, uh, Udayan, as you know, and there's only one chapter about a single cricketer, that's a chapter on my sightings of Sachin. Because yes. of fundamental, not because he's my favorite cricketer. Yes. Profound impact he had on the game and on Indian society yes. from the late 1980s till the 2010s. Yes. And uh, obviously, so, I mean, he shaped all of us for 30 years. Yes. So yes. That, it's because as much as for his cricketing greatness, as for the sociological significance of Sachin Tendulkar, right. I've devoted a whole chapter to this single individual. But that doesn't make him my favorite cricketer. My favorite cricketer, it'll probably be a competition between uh, Keith Miller, yes. uh, the great Australian all-rounder, whose autobiography was the first book I read cover to cover, mm -hmm. G.R. Vishwanath, yes. the first cricketer whose hand I shook, yes. and Bishan Singh Gary, who is the cricketer I know with an absolutely upright backbone and real moral courage, apart from being a truly great spin bowler. Yeah. So probably yeah. that's my trinity. You know, that's my uh, Vishnu Shiva. You know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, you know Brahma is uh, kind of uh, yeah. you know Keith Miller. Uh, uh, so one cricketer from my state, Karnataka, G R yeah. from yeah. my country, and yeah. one cricketer from elsewhere, Keith Miller. Yeah. So I, I wanted to just to close. I wanted to. Uh, draw readers' attention to, readers and viewers' attention to the frontispiece of the book. I don't know if you can see it there. This is Ram with Bishan Bedi and Anil Kumble. And this has the wonderful caption, two great spin bowlers and another. <laughs> and of, of course, again, one of, the, one of the spin bowlers in question there uh, is from Karnataka, Anil Kumble, and the other is a, is a favorite of, of Ram's Bishan Bedi. And the third used to be a spin bowler too. Not many people know that. So Ram, in your playing days, you were a spin bowler. And, yeah, yeah. And 
but this is, uh, I, I mean, it, I, I wanted to point that out because it is uh, such a quirky thing and it, it's such a typical thing of the book. I mean, the book is full of anecdotes like that and, and, and little sidelights like that and, and very humorous bits. And, and I, I think people are going to really enjoy reading this book. Um, Ram, thank you so I just much. Want to add I think I want to add something. the I just want to add something on that on that epigraph. Yes. yes. You know, uh, sorry, on that frontage piece, uh, which you just talked about. You know that, uh, which is there about this, uh, the photograph of the three with me, with uh, Bedi and and Kumle, two right. great spin bowlers and another. Now there's also a symmetry which the uh, reader will uh, discover as he or she goes along. That Bishan Bedi was a great left arm spinner. Uh, Kumle was a great leg spin googly bowler. And here's the asymmetry. I was an off spinner, but a very medium off spinner. But I was, I was happy as an off spinner to be in between a left arm spinner and a leg, a leg spin googly puller. But you know, it was just, so it's, it's full of, I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of the jokes are against myself, you know, at, at my failures in the beginning. Like there's a lot that's kind of self deprecating in the book, yes, indeed. Yes. It's, 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 uh, I didn't really talk about my successes. I mean, uh, uh, but it was it was very really nice to. I mean, I think the other thing about cricket, and I just end with this, right. then, yeah. is that team sports are a training for life. If you grow up as a tennis player or a badminton player, you don't really learn the meaning of. Uh, you grow up somewhat self-obsessed, even selfish. If you're a team player, if you grow up as a cricketer or a footballer or a hockey player, you yeah. glory in your teammate success, even when you score a duck. Indeed. You learn to accept Indeed. failure. Indeed. Solidarity, collectivity, all that comes playing a team sport. And I'm very grateful that it was cricket and not tennis that I played when I was young. That's a wonderful note to end on. Uh, thank you, Ram. Thank you for writing this lovely book. And I am sure that, you know, readers across, not only across India, but across the world are going to love reading this and that it will it'll entertain them and inspire them as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rev.